Welcome to a new edition of Crawling Mondays. Today, we are going to talk about SEO strategy, which I have to say is a topic that is not as well covered as it should be. Sometimes we see guides or articles that they say that is about SEO strategy, but they are actually tactics. And today we are going to discuss why it is critical to set a sound online strategy in SEO, typical mistakes, and how you can establish easily one with the tips and advice of a couple of guests that I have invited today because they have a lot of experience setting and establishing winning SEO strategies. On one hand, I have Kevin Indyk, VP of SEO and content at G2. Hello, Kevin. How are you? Good, good. Pleasure to be on. I'm a fan. Thank you, Kevin. And then on the other hand, James Brockban, Managing Director at Digital Loft. Thank you very much for coming, James. No worries. Thank you for having me. Really excited to be here. And uh, yeah, looking forward to sharing hopefully some insights on uh, how the viewers can create a great strategy. Excellent. So let's start. Uh, which are the most common issues, mistakes, the, the top errors that you see SEOs do again and again with their own strategies? Beyond that, sometimes yeah. there isn't even a strategy in the first place. No, I mean, I think, I think my, my number one, you know, the most common mistake that I see time and time again is sort of assuming the SEO strategy that you can take a one size fits all approach. You know, there is, you know, you take two sites, you take five sites and the strategy that you use across those sites and that you put in place should not be the same. SEO is not a checklist. And I think, you know, as, as you, as you said a moment ago, you know, there's so many, there's so many tactics that are used in place of a strategy and to me, you know, it's always a case that strategy has to be what you want to achieve. Tactics are how you're going to do it. So why so many times SEOs, marketers are going, okay, well, we're going to do this. We're going to do that. They're talking tactically. But if you're not aligning that with a strategy, then you're just working to checklists. And that's not how you drive success. You know, you take two sites and the issues that exist, the business, you know, how, in how SEO integrates into the wider marketing mix, it's not going to be the same. And that's where strategy comes in. Yeah, I very much agree to that. And I think that most people know that strategy is somewhat important, but most people are also not able to define what a strategy actually is. Right? We, had, we heard these examples of skyscraper and keyword research, link building, and none of these are strategies. They're not even tactics. They're just, just things that we do. A strategy looks like something as in localized content in the five languages to go to market in tier one EMEA markets or convert 30% of freemium signups into paid users with an email drip campaign. Okay. Those are strategies. And so to quickly explain the difference between tactics and strategies, a strategy is all about the macro. Tactics are about, about the micro. Strategies are about the long-term. Tactics are about the short-term. Many tactics can form a strategy if you tie them together in a smart way. Uh, but the strategy is really about the how to get there. The tactic is what to do. And what also is more often missed by people is that they don't feed their strategies with a lot of data, evidence, and research. Yeah. A strategy takes time. This is not something, as you mentioned, James, that you can just copy paste from somewhere on the internet or even from another company. Every company is unique has a unique go-to-market strategy, and that means they need unique strategies. It's because every company has its own goals, yeah. its own business and marketing goals, and your SEO strategies needs to be connected and aligned so to make them happen, to, to, to support and, and achieve those marketing and business goals, right? And 100% and regarding how to see strategies versus tactics, because a lot of times, indeed, there is this misunderstanding between one and the other. And this is why, again, sometimes I see people saying, oh, why, why all this effort in my SEO process doesn't pay off? And sometimes it's because they are just following a checklist, as James <laughs> mentioned, without, without being aligned or connected in a way that they will fulfill an actual business goal. And or, actual or, goal. Or, even, or even know why you're doing that. Indeed. You even know why you're doing it. It's because it's a best practice and that's it. No, no, it, it shouldn't be because it has best practice. It's because you should want to achieve something out of that that you should be able to measure yes, and, absolutely. at the end of the day. Excellent. Really is yeah. that uh, tactics can work in the short term. Yeah, and does. I think that's why a lot of people hang on to them and are so fascinated because you see some, some results, but what often happens is that after a while, you don't know what to do next. You see stagnation. 
And then the big question uh, is what other tactic can I put on top of my current tactic? And it's a vicious circle that gets you nowhere in the long term. And that's what you see over and over again from winning companies. They have a clear and good strategy. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, to me as well, you know, it's, it's understanding that you can have specific strategies within a wider strategy, you know, just, just simply identifying that you need to build links. That is not a strategy. You then need to have a link building strategy. You need a content strategy. And these, these work, these should work together to produce a larger SEO strategy. Every type I think of, of SEO action, like, yeah, build links or uh, optimize your metadata right yeah. or, or create content but yeah co like the content are the metadata and the links they should put points some somewhere and they should be prioritizing the, the place to rank for something that is actually yeah. meaningful um business wise too and the, and this is the thing the strategy is how those tactics are prioritized or focused in, in yes the absolutely yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, I, I see this all the time, you know, I mean, and, you know, it's no secret that as an agency, a lot of what we do is digital PR for link building. And, you know, I see, I see this all the time, link building without a strategy. And you are, you know, where, where SEOs, where businesses are building links blind, and they are just wasting efforts, wasting resources, because there is no clear strategy. And I think, you know, to me, it's understanding how strategies for link building, for content, for technical SEO, how they fit into your SEO strategy. And again, there isn't a checklist. Yeah. Even, even within tactical and approach. It is, it is when you identify like what type of links do you actually need? Yeah. Do you need Absolutely. a lot of, links of, a, a lot of you know, diversity yeah. of, of, of highly authoritative domains or oh. only a few ones that target this particular set of pages that are the ones that actually need more links? This type of thing, 100%. So these are the most typical mistakes. Like which would you say that are the building blocks? Which are those steps that you think that every SEO should consider following to make sure that their SEO strategy is sound? Yeah, that's a, that's a really good question. And before we jump into the specifics, I just want to put strategy itself into a greater context. So from a business perspective, it is usually vision, strategy, tactics, right? The strategy leads up to a vision, which is a picture of the future and what you want to achieve as a whole. And then from there, you set up the strategies that lead you to that vision, and you then define the tactics that feed the strategies. So there are three things that I think make, the, make up the most important building blocks of a good strategy. The first one is to know the goal. You have to know the outcome you want to achieve, which then means you can measure how effective your strategy is. Number two is you need to know your environment, right? So you need to know your competitors, your market, your target audience, and it's not as simple as just looking at a couple of keywords and saying, oh, these are the other sites that are ranking for it. There is a lot of conversation and everybody who has ever worked in a, in a large enterprise company understands that there is often disconnect between the perceived competitors and the actual competitors and the SERPs and so Absolutely. on and so on. So you need to have that conversation. It is often a mix, right? And then number three is you need to know your resources. What tools do you have? What people do you have? How many? What domains do you have? What content assets? All these can then tie, uh, be tied together into a strategy. And then from there, you make a plan. You yeah. prioritize, you set milestones, you assign responsibilities, delegate the work. And the plan can is, often comes in a format of a roadmap, right? It's a, in a very simple form. It's a table with all your objectives, with timings, responsibilities, metrics, and then you have the tactics there. Then you define uh, what do you want to apply specifically to get to a certain outcome? And last point that I want to make is that I just wanted to give a couple of examples where strategies are being applied. So, for example, domains is a uh, field where you often need different strategies, especially when it comes to internationalization or globalization. Content is a field where you need strategies, page templates or product features, site hygiene, um, backlinks. Uh, but it's not as simple as just saying we, we do link building, right? There has to be a lot of work. Behind. The way a lot of people think about SEO audits and recommendations, you see right there is a list of actions that are unconnected yeah. necessarily between them. And whenever I talk about how S winning SEO recommendations <laughs> should be established in the, in the first place is that they should be connected to a larger strategy. The context should be taken into consideration from a goal perspective, business re requirements, constraints, technical requirement constraints, and of course, the resources that are available to you. So you can actually establish actions and steps that make sense 
and can be actually successful. It sometimes is hard because I think it requires a little bit of more level of influence also mm-hmm. from a consultant perspective, uh, more maturity and seeing SEO not isolated, but as part uh, or a core part of, of the marketing overall strategy and, and also business one too. I think one of the things in terms of building blocks to establish a strategy is know where you can and can't compete. You know, if you're, if you're working with a startup, I mean, you know, we, I see this all the time, you know, we're working with startups who say we want to draw, you know, their, their perceived strategy in their head from, from search is that we want to outrank this competitor or that competitor. Well, in many instances, they've been, they've been going 10 years, they've been going 15 years, they've been investing in SEO for a long time. And I think that, you know, the very foundations of building the strategy is knowing where you can and can't compete in, in a time frame. And I think, you know, it's knowing one of the things that we put a lot of time into is knowing competitors' weaknesses, knowing their strengths. Again, knowing where you can compete and where you can't compete, understanding that the weaknesses of a competitor may be their speed of getting things done. And, you know, if we're working with a startup, you know, one of the things that we often try and prioritize with them is you can get things done a lot faster than your competitors who are large corporation enterprise organizations, but also know their strengths or, you know, understand where, you know, if they are, you know, in many cases, I know, Kevin, this is something you've spoken about a lot. It's, you know, when companies get to a stage where they're building links naturally because of building great products, you know, engineering link building as part of their wider marketing strategy. If they're their strengths, no, no short-term link building strategy is going to see you compete there. So know where you can compete, know where you can't compete right now and build into your strategy how you can get onto, you know, get to be that, be into that position where at some stage you, you can compete. This Absolutely. is important that, that you mentioned, and I think that it should be brought up more whenever we discuss how uh, small companies can beat big one. And it's because of this type of vision, right? That you need yeah. to analyze and identify the, the, the strengths, the opportunities, the weaknesses yeah. of the competitors in order also to prioritize your own actions. Too. Yes. No, you, can, you can use a very simple tool of like a quadrant, right? Two axes, what are my strengths and weaknesses? What are my competitors' strengths and weaknesses? And that's a very strategic approach to then define what should we invest in? And it comes from a completely different perspective than doing a keyword analysis and seeing what are they ranking for and what not. So I really like your uh, approach here, James. Yeah, no, it's, um, but I think that's again, something that people don't do and it's, it's really important to do. Again, it's thinking strategically, we, you, know, every, you know, people are so quick to, to jump straight into tactics. They turn straight to keyword research. They, they jump straight to keyword gap analysis to try and identify where the competitors are ranking. But if you realistically don't have the authority, don't have the content, if you're not realistically going to be able to compete for that, then your strategy needs to define how you're going to get there. Absolutely. And this is important because I call this the resistance, right? As a consultant and even as an in-house marketing person need to get over the initial resistance because you often have a client or somebody from uh, upper management who wants to see fast results, who has maybe an imperfect view. Mostly it's like you want to rank for these keywords, right? And then you know that's going to push you into a corner where you become very tactical very quickly, but you miss the strategy. And so some of the best consultants and marketers that I've seen are able to get over that resistance. But you know what? This is realistically why you need someone in a certain level or within a certain level of seniority to be able to go, you know, have the, you know, the support also uh, to be able to go to this, uh, type of decision makers and say, look, well, if I do that, okay, perfect. That is flexible or no, that is not flexible at all given the resources that I have, or yes, I can do that given the resources that I have, but then uh, there is always a trade-off. I won't be able to do this, this, and this, and this because the type of SEO processes that I work with companies, they, they, most of them, they do have their own in-house SEO teams. And my um, role is, uh, of, of indeed an advisor, a consultant, a strategist for certain specific scenarios and challenges that they have. And, uh, and sometimes I need to help build cases and show and validate all the other ones. And, and then sometimes I think about how I will have done this 10 years ago or even five years ago. And then I realized that I am, I am able to do what I do right now because I have certain level of seniority and and experience 
uh, that allows me to, you know, connect all the all these dots that I, that I am able to connect right now, and and to have, you know, the capacity to be able to say no or to reject something or to propose something or alternatives and to be able to craft also cases for for this. And uh, unfortunately, I think that with this appeal of agencies in general to try to make clients happy all the time and say yes and win accounts, this type of thing. Sometimes, and also having having um, SEOs um, that are like the first touch with the account that are not necessarily that seniors also, that they don't have the, the, the capacity to do this. Sometimes, unfortunately, is how this ends up happening. Like, like being cornered into uh, an area that is not feasible to, to develop a, a winning SEO process because of a lack of strategy or a strategy will go wrong because of, of all of these influences that many people messing around or doing requests, right? I think that we have covered in general, like the, the main issues on one hand, then on the other hand, uh, what you should actually try to do, like the building blocks, the best criteria. Can you please share those SEO strategies that you've seen that are have, have been amazing, that you are happy, whether are proud to have been part of or that you have even seen other people do, that you have been quite impressed by them on one hand. And then on the other hand, we can maybe also discuss those SEO processes where a lack of strategy or a completely bad strategy has messed things up in a really bad way. Absolutely. Yeah, so I mean, a, a great strategy that, that I've been involved in and sort of overseen over the past two two years or so is with a, with a client in the UK who's competing in the car in, insurance space. And I think really the... Why that's been a great strategy is because we've, as an agency, we've worked with with the client and their internal team, and we've been able to compete. You know, this this was a brand new domain that hit top three ranking positions in about nine or ten months for very very competitive keywords. And actually, yeah, we could we could talk about the tactics, we could talk about what we did, but the real reason that was successful is because we built trust from day one. There was trust between the agency and the individual parties. And we were, we were briefing in recommendations, yes, from a technical perspective, from a content perspective, and putting in place link building strategies. And actually where this was so successful is that it joined up. There, were, there was an agency, you know, there was, there was us as the agency and there was internal teams across PR and content who were working together. There was the trust there between all three parties to get things done in a speedy manner. You know, things were, things were acting quickly. But we were also in a position to be able to, as, you know, as I said before, identify weaknesses in the competition and work those in. And why this, you know, why to me, the, the most successful strategies are where multiple departments are working together. A successful strategy is not going to be executed by one individual or even one individual team. You need to have buy-in from developers, from PRs, from content creators, from those who are signing off the strategy in the first place. And I think to me, you know, in terms of a strategy that I've been involved in, that I'm proud to be proud to have been involved in, it's it's this one, you know, what yes, one because of the results, but also that the results didn't just come from the tactics that we used. It came from a strategy that had buy-in from all parties involved and everyone knew their place in that strategy. Yeah, that buy-in is so yeah, important. It is, right? it's so important. And it, it it's amazing how much what a difference it makes to results when there is that buy-in. You know, I mean, you know, we, we can work with with clients where there is, you know, perhaps one party internally, often developers who are pushing back and back and back. And it just adds, as you said, it adds a lot of friction and it adds resistance. And it's overcoming that resistance and it's getting things done. You know, I know, you know, I, I know work, you know, for agency side that the time we spend debating with developers going back and forward Yes, use data to justify things. Back up your justification with other examples why why this should be done. In nine out of ten instances, these recommendations get implemented in the end, but you go down three months of justifying. If you can work together and build that trust and understand that whether whether it's an agency, whether it's in-house, everybody's working together to the same goal. And when they're aligned on that strategy, that it, it ensures that everyone's working towards that alignment goal. and support from other areas is fundamental, is critical, and then also the attitude. That is why I think it is so important to communicate yourself well and your and your intent. So be, you know, just to not rob in a bad way other people who 
are also, they also have their own goals, right? And they are also working on their own priorities too. So that is, that is why it becomes critical, critical. And I can totally see that what you, what you mean, James, that uh, yeah, a, a strategy can look beautiful in paper, but yeah. once, if, if you try to implement it and then you realize that the developer, every yes. time that you request something, there's always a problem. There's always a challenge. Even they double question stuff that, you know, you, you can end up then building cases for six months instead of implementing uh, the actual actions to see results. That so should I, be all the difference. So identify these potential problems at the, you know, when you're producing that strategy, have everybody on the same page. And then from there, you can go down tactical implementation. Excellent. Yeah, and let's not forget that SEO is a highly dependent discipline on other, other uh, yeah, teams, absolutely. right? Designers, developers, writers. It's almost like this, this layer that you put on top of other things. Uh, so some of the best strategies that I have seen in the space from other companies is, for example, at Home2Go, Airbnb competitor, Pinterest, Policy Genius, uh, Policy Genius Credit Karma, Wayfair, and of course, Atlassian, and you know, not to, to toot my own horn, but I saw it firsthand when I worked at Atlassian, and I'm also very proud of how we do it at G2. And this is something that I have been, you know, um, where I have my own journey from going from individual contributor to now a manager who kind of fights these battles with upper with upper management. Um, and I'm very proud of how much internal alignment we now have with other big organizations within a company like sales, like marketing, like products. We have common and shared goals. That's one of the easiest ways to align a whole company is just give them the same goal and then to figure out how to get there. Um, and to make that a bit more tactical, every half years, every six months, we define a list of big bets. These are kind of our investments as a company that we make into SEO. And those bets could be product features, content, or all sorts of other optimizations. And then we tie them together um, into a set of bets. And from there, we define the tactics and plan the execution. Uh, we publish that in an internal wiki where we clearly outline and describe what we're planning to do by when and who does it. And then we add, we ask other company, uh, sorry, other other teams to ask questions, to refine our points, to to add new points, right? So we, we really try to make this bulletproof, uh, and I think that's really important for us because we operate across so many categories. You have thousands of software categories, and all of these are slightly different verticals that sometimes need a different emphasis or different focus. Um, so that's that's how we do it at G2, but you can see it at these other companies that I mentioned. You can feel the alignment from the outside when you look at their performance. Yeah, I have to say regarding the alignment, um, not only with all of the areas, but also with a final business or marketing type of outcome. And especially if you want to win the support of other areas, uh, it's cr critical also to align with the goals that this other areas already have. So for example, one of the, some of the best strategies that I have seen has been, for example, when uh, a client had too many requests uh, via their, their help desk system, and they wanted to double down on the online support documentation that they already had, but you know, it, it was like a black box there uh, and they, they had little flexibility. So they, they were willing to rebuild the whole thing to make sure to rank the first and because they had a lot of branded queries regarding this type of questions to be there whenever their customers search for anything uh pre pre-buy like pre-sales type of support and post-sales type of support and uh, and then we work in a way with flexibility with resources but of course the, the there was this high need of oh, we cannot handle this number of requests in, through all help desks because this it's worth money, right? And, and then at the end, everybody was willing to support. And after a few months, everybody was happy. Of course, I was super happy because there was this increase in, on traffic, conversions. We, we were also given uh, flexibility to connect these pages to the other money-making ones. So it actually also helped uh, to achieve all the goals from a business perspective too, not only from a from a support perspective. So it's a win, 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 win right? when you are able to align everything together and works well. And then on the other hand, unfortunately, many years ago, when I was working in-house, I faced some of the 
worst experiences that I have had as an SEO because the strategy didn't match. There was no way to match it with the business model of, of the company. At that point, 10 years ago, 2011 or so, it was a typical wedding website that charged uh, companies to be listed there, you know, very old school type of directory, still mindset and business model. And of course, the, the typical native web type of website came listing all of the companies in the sector and with all of content, 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 also being able to rank for everything. So unless the company will change the business model or will have changed the business model at that point, there was no way for them to compete with this other players, right? So at that point, when I faced that and I presented the point, like, well, we we need to start listing everybody. You cannot charge for listing. Let's differentiate the listings, the the pro, you know, premium type of model. But there was resistance, and and unfortunately, well, I was able to move on, of course, to another position when I saw that. Yeah, At that yeah. point, I go that no, 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 no. There was no way. But unfortunately, that company ended up dying. And not only because of that, of course, there were other reasons, but you could see how there's a business model at that point, it, it, what they were trying to sell became a commodity and they were not able to keep up and evolve with the change. And a, 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 an easy way to see that straight away was how it ended up like uh, being a disconnect between what they were doing and they able to grow from an organic perspective. And that would have been a huge like red alert right there. Uh, at all levels, at a business level, level too. As you pointed out, you know, almost the the successes and, and the you know and the the bad strategies that we see, you know, they're a flip of each other. You know, I, I we we were working with a client end of last year, and their previous agency, their strategy was to in, and I, I kid you not, their strategy was to index as many pages as possible because they believed that that would make them look better to Google. Now, one that's not a strategy, but we ended up with. I mean, I think now we have something like 7,000 URLs indexed. They had about 1.8 million URLs indexed. And the agency kept sending the client screenshots from Search Console going, look how many pages we've got indexed. That was their strategy. They were actively looking at how they could roll out more faster navigation, more filters to expand the indexed URLs. And to them, that was a strategy. And that they, their success was, they were measuring their own success on how many indexed would be in, URLs were being indexed. And that's, that's not a strategy, but I think it's, well, I would say if it's not tied to a business goal no, or absolutely. a business goal, it is not, right? And like, that's, the num- yeah. that's the number one, that's the number one mistake. And, and when we see bad strategies, it is, as you say, there is no connect between what the business is trying to achieve. SEO on its own should fit into the wider marketing mix. It should fit into the wider business strategy. And when they align, but when they don't, Ultimately, SEO is not SEO isn't a secret weapon. You know, simply having a, a strategy document that goes, "We want to index two million URLs." Why? You know, and I think you know, I often ask. One of the things I often ask is, "Why? Why do you want to do that?" You know, we're approached all the time on with client with potential clients, businesses, saying we want to build a hundred links or a thousand links. And my first question to them will be, "Why? Why?" And it's the answers often differ significantly, but one, it will be because one of our competitors has 2,000 links. We have a link gap. Okay. <laughs> when you dig down into it, I'll say, well, what is the real link gap? Because once you filter out low quality links, scraper sites, that sort of thing, it's never what people think it is. And the other one is still because the more links, the better. You know, we are in 2020. And I think it's, I think we have this issue where, SEO strategy was very different even five or six years ago to where it is now. Yeah. And I think, you know, we still see a lot of marketers that are almost set in their own ways that they don't truly understand what a strategy should look like today. And yes, we all know things works back in 2010 that don't, that we, we would never do today. But if we look at what strategies looked like then, they probably were a lot more tactical because you could get away with doing that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they're, and they're, they're typically the bad the bad strategies that I see are those that are they're they're misinformed, yeah. based on mi- miseducation. Yeah, and that that's actually a good reminder on uh, one of my uh, or my earlier days in SEO. I actually paid my dues on the agency side for my for the first half of my career, and I was very lucky to get into enterprise consulting relatively early on. And so I was exposed to a couple of big name companies, and that reminds me of the story where I encountered this one 
not company that I'm not going to name right now, but everybody knows their name and their SEO strategy was focused around 30 keywords that they wanted to rank uh, number one for. Yeah. And that was their strategy. And it's often because there is either like a, uh, you know, a young kid that has no experience in this area and was just like, is now the dedicated SEO or there's some, um, someone in management who doesn't have a lot of time and now has a responsibility to come up with some sort of an SEO strategy. And so they read a couple of articles and then they're like, oh yeah, okay, sure. That's, that's what we want to do. Uh, and then obviously, you know, we, we discussed, uh, you know, uh, enough how uh, that is not a long-term play and how that's not really um, a great strategy. So nobody really asked that company, like, what is the 12 months play? What business goal okay. does that support? Okay. And that brings me to the deeper problem that I see and that is clarity. Yes. So we often don't invest enough time into making things crystal clear. And one good tool that, that I like to use that's very simple is the five whys. So like a six-year-old kid, you simply ask yourself yeah. five times, why are we doing that? Yeah. And if after the first one or two or maybe even three times, you don't have a great answer, that's an issue, right? Uh, uh, yeah, the, the five times uh, uh, tool, that uh, the, the five whys tool brings you to the root cause. Yes. And that will also help you to make your strategies really good good and really bulletproof. Another way to do that is to present your strategy to peers or colleagues, which by the way, why it's important to have a strong network and ask them to rip it apart. Yeah. And it's, it's very humbling, you know, like not every ego can take it. Um, but it's, it's, it's a great thing to discover questions that you might not have a good answer to and to really come up with a great long-term uh, strategy. I start wrapping up. I wanted to ask you about actionable tips, advice that you think could be powerful and, and important for SEOs out there who uh -huh. are still struggling in this, right? Like what advice you, would you, will, will you give to them? And if yeah. there's any sort of overlooked type of tip that you will. Yeah. I mean, I think to me, to me, I mean, other than the things we've discussed, I mean, one of the things that I sort of instill in my team is identifying what the growth drivers are in a strategy against what just puts you on a level playing field. You know, I think it's all too common that when we put a strategy together, you know, I see this all the time where you look at that strategy and you go, okay, but actually that's not going to drive growth. You know, are those tactics actually going to drive growth? And of course, every strategy needs, you know, your hygiene tasks as well as your growth drivers. But if you truly are trying to drive growth as the strategy, what are those growth drivers? What's going to contribute to that growth? And, you know, when, when we come to putting tactics into a strategy, one of the things I, I ask is if you could only execute three tasks, what would they be and why? When you start thinking like that, you start to prioritize and you start to really focus. How can we meet, you know, how, how can we deliver on this strategy? And that, that's a good way to think. And uh, yeah, a tip that uh, I think people can take a lot from. Yeah, uh, I'd love to close up with three small things. Um, so one trick that I learned is if you have a really hard time coming up with a strategy, one thing you can do is to look at all the tactics that you're executing and cluster them into groups, right? You basically tie them together and that can help you to then see the long-term play and where it's going. And then you can recalibrate and say, is this really leading me to where I want? Or am I just like hunting one best practice or one, sh <clears throat> excuse me, one short-term goal after the other? Um, a second thing you can do is to write your strategy out. Lots of great companies are doing this, like Google and Amazon. They have documents of several pages where they write down their strategy and what they're trying to accomplish. And that gets you away from a spreadsheet or from a list, which helps you to think about your strategy in a more coherent and, and concise way. And then the last thing is, even though you don't want to copy strategies from other companies, you can learn from the strategies of other companies. I'm actually pretty passionate about that myself. And I write a lot about that in my blog, in my newsletter. Um, and I dissect how big companies set up and design their strategies, right? Like Google, for example, bringing their platforms together, like Gmail, YouTube, and Discover, that is a strategy. Apple charging for services and going away from hardware, that is a strategy. Or Spotify getting into podcasts and buying the Joe Rogan show for $100 million. That is also a part of a strategy. And then you can think about how does it apply to your field? How does it inspire you and help you think about what you do and applying it to your case? But I don't want to leave you with one great uh, little document or, or um, 
Evidence of Strategy, which is an article from Ben, ben Gomez, the head of search at Google that he wrote in 2018, that is called, um, called Improving Search for the Next 20 Years. And I cite that over and over again in different contexts, but that is a perfect example of a strategy and it's public, it's out there. So I encourage you to take a look at that and see how can you approach uh, or apply those ways to think of it to your company. Amazing, amazing tips right, right there to be easily applied. And then I will say, if in case that you are already implementing an SEO process, right? And then after seeing this video, you realize, oh, I don't have a proper strategy. A good, a good way, I will say, to do, do a little bit of reverse engineering and try to identify if you are actually lacking a strategy is that to, do, to those actions that you already have in your SEO action plan, you add like an, an additional layer and an additional column to your, to your action rows asking why and trying to come up with an answer that is not technical, that is not SEO connected, but business connected. Why? And then another column potential is like, what will happen if this is not done? And if you not, cannot come up with a reason business-wise, also not technical, oh, we won't be able to crawl more or index more. No. Why? Oh, because we won't be able to put, uh, have the pages that are meant to to attract uh, this type of traffic and conversions and to be able to reach these goals uh, from, from, a, from a conversion perspective. These are the type of, of, uh, of questions that you sh your actions should address. And, and straightforward, you can see like this, if they, they are actually connected with an actual business goal. So hopefully all of this will help. So thank you very much for your time, uh, James, Kevin. If you okay. have any question, if you have any comment, please, leave them below and uh, you can also of course follow james follow kevin they are continuously sharing lots of good stuff at conferences even online ones now and also over twitter and in within their blogs and newsletters you can follow them there too and of course if you like this video and want to see much more like this make sure to subscribe to colin mondays in case you haven't and like this video too in case you like it to, to be able to see much more like this too so thank you very much again for your time and see you in Thank you very much for having me. Bye-bye.